So I just really want to talk to you, Jackie, just about your life as a prison officer. I am very passionate about prisons and the people who work there. So yeah, if you don't mind, I'd just like to talk to you about your days as a prison officer and what you're doing now at the prison museum. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you want to start, Jackie, by just telling me why you decided to join the prison service? Well, I was always in the, in the youth clubs and the, when I was younger, like, and I thought I could do some good. That soon got knocked out in my life. But, uh, <laughs> I was in the sport. I was good at sports and gymnastics and that thing. Like, I was always involved in that in my life, like swimming, cycling, in any sport. And I just thought I, could, I would get a bottle or something and be able to do some good. Fantastic. And how old were you when you joined the prison service? Yeah, I was uh, 35. That was a limit. I was just time to... Okay. So there was a limit back then to how old you could be? They wouldn't take them more than that at that time. I think it's changed now. Like, I think I think I'm up to 42 now, I think. Wow. Okay. And um, where was the first prison you worked at? Was it Peterhead or was it somewhere else? No, it was only at Peterhead. Okay, so you spent your whole time at Peterhead. Yeah, if you're willing to stay here, they would keep you. <laughs> Nobody wanted to come here. So tell me a little bit about that, Jackie. I have heard that Peterhead was a, a difficult prison to work in. A lot of notorious prisoners there. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, it was not, but it was just a certain few. Like, yeah, I worked a lot with the uh, A categories, which were potential escapees and troublemakers. And we were, I was so many officers detailed for that, like that was our sort of job looking after them, like uh, watching them. You did get a lot of trouble from them, but most of them never bothered you, really. There's a lot of hype about it, but most of them, they needed help, really, you know. They, were, they weren't any use for anything, <laughs> I always say. Like, <laughs> So when, when you say potential escapees in the A category, what kind of people were you dealing with? Well, you told you the Howard Wilson, the policeman who shot the policeman, the Bartlett, he started robbing banks like, left the police and started in Baltimore Novel. That was the first black father like. All the most difficult ones, long, long serving, most of them long serving like. Yeah. He's on a force. Well, he escaped twice, like, and so you, the worst of the worst. And did you get any specific training to be dealing with prisoners like that? No, not really, no. I, I was nothing to train with, really, no. A very little recreation or anything. They were all up in the seven till nine at night, but there was only table tennis, darts, and uh, that was about it. So, Idle hands. Yeah, and I have heard that, that it's so important in prison to keep people busy because yeah. prisoners who aren't busy are often causing trouble. Well, that's it. That's it. No. And there's nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah. What was it like back then? Obviously, um, nowadays there is quite a lot of rehabilitation in prisons. What was it like back then? Very little. Very little, if anything at all. They had that work that went to different sheds, like there's a tailor shop, joiner shop, mat making, the mailbox, of course. And a lot of them sold destroying work, I would say. Like, Yeah. So that's how they'd spend their days. They would go to work during the day. Yeah, they went out. They, they, maybe two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon. And there's a bit of break, well, there's a break in between, like, then they back to work after lunch again for another couple of hours. More time wasted to do that, take them up and down. And yeah. And did you spend a lot of time with prisoners then when they weren't at work or were they in their cells most of the time? Well, they went to work, but they, so many officers stayed in the hall, other ones had to go down to the sheds, the work sheds like, along with the parties and whatever shop you were detailed for. Uh, but they, mo most of the categories were in the tailor shop, like. Okay. Which was the most dangerous shop, really. I with, bet. You know, the size of tailor's scissors. Mm. A lot, one officer would stop with them. And oh, wow. There's about a carry-on in a tailor shop. There was quite a lot of injured, like. 
Yeah. And I read your book. I found your book absolutely fascinating. Can I ask how old you were when you wrote that book? 89. Fantastic. 89 and you wrote a book. And it's it's a very interesting book, Jackie. And in there, you, you talk about some of the assaults that happened on you. And it seems like assaults on prison officers were actually quite common back then. Is that right? When I started first, it was every day. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I just been, I nearly started. Prison officer came up and had nothing to do with them. And he was doing the uh, mark making shop. I never even spoke to him. I didn't know his name. He just got up in the jaw. Like, it's the best thing to do was just laugh at him. I just said, my wife had to know that any day. <laughs> I'm sure she would have been delighted to know you were telling people that. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bad day, I suppose. You, you were an easiest thing, but just don't get nothing, really. Mm-hmm. And what about the conditions in the prison? Although Peterhead had notorious prisoners, what were the prison conditions like? Well, very basic, very basic. As I say, it was not, not much recreation or nothing, really. Mm-hmm. And were people sharing cells? Did prisoners have their own cells or did they share with other people? Well, it was a mixture. Like, in fact, when we were at the, the highest we had was 450. They were only supposed to have 200 and something. So wow. you had three in some cell. You had one bed and had a single bed. Mm-hmm. So it was all crowded. Yeah. And how do you think prisoners felt about the conditions that they were living in? Well, they weren't, but it, it was quite like being two in a cell, because you're somebody who's picked where you get a game of cards to get them drunk to something. Yeah. I, I don't think it bothered them that much, but a lot of them were brothers, and they all sort of knew one another, like, you know, because when they get papers in the morning, who's coming up this week, like, you know? Yeah. Almost like a social social same, thing for them. Same areas, same the same. And most of them are returns anyway. Mm-hmm. They're sort of out and they're back in again. And yeah, that revolving door, which we still uh, seem to yeah. have nowadays. That's right. Yeah. So, Jackie, I'm led to believe that you're a very humble man and that obviously um, you're famous for the September 1987 riot that you were unfortunately part of. Um, (laughs) So I'm sure many people have asked you about this and I'm led to believe that after it happened, you just wanted to forget about it and just go back to living your life. But if you don't mind, I'd like to speak to you a little bit about it. Yes, well... So, I, as I say, I've read your book, but for people who haven't, do you want to just tell us a little bit about what actually happened to you with starting just before it? Well, I was standing at the gallery and speaking to some brother that just come back from the gym, telling them that they were to be in the gym. Like, you had a bit of bad time, you know, with them. And I saw this uh, prisoner trying to stab another officer on the same landing as me, like at the other end. So I went to get help him, like, and uh, I got the knife off the prisoner, but everybody enjoyed that. So I just had to hand it back. People asked, why did I hand it back? Because they've never seen a prison, right? <laughs> yeah. hand it back. And then uh, the other officer, he was in the top flat, I was in the third flat. No, I don't know why, I was in the second flat. And uh, he was taking hostage as well. So it took, eventually took me up. Carried me up to the top flat with him. And just a time, my boot list was around my hands, like, and we were moved about the whole night, so I didn't know where we were. Yeah, I did put a sheet out the bottom flat window to let him know, but I uh, don't think I took any notice, like. Mm-hmm. And then the letters, the both of us out on the floor with our heads under a bed and beat us with table legs. Wow. And uh, yeah, Bill, he, oh, he got a broken ankle, but I was very quick. I was always very fit. I shot up under the bed like that, and that one, he, he just rammed it into my face, like, so my teeth were through. Well, I was a bit of a worst knock now. I was it. The Lord just moved the boat there. And you're getting beaten out all, all the time. Eventually, I heard him saying Bill had been stabbed in the neck, but I didn't know he was separate from me. And uh, 
I put the pellet test around his neck, like, and I said, you better get him out of here, like. Mm-hmm. So he, he would have, I just wanted to get out because I was oldest. I, I felt I'd be better on mowing, like, you know? Yeah. You do your own, do you? If it do you, it's you and them. Mm-hmm. On your own, you've got to be more chance of getting a conversation, like, but that took a week. Yeah, and in your book, you mentioned that, that your thinking was if Bill left, then at least you could almost be on side with them rather than them looking at you as an us versus them. Well, we just got punches every day, like every... If they, there was one negotiator, every time he came on, they were high. Now, I, I, I didn't agree with that, but when I spoke about it, they said, well, but the, he's a negotiator, but they didn't like him. So every time he came on, I got another head. Yeah. And they kept you um, for five days. Is that right, Jackie? From the Tuesday evening till Saturday morning. That's the Eskimen, Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And how were they making you spend your days? I know that they were on the roof a lot of the time. Were you on the roof with them? Yeah, yeah. The first, it was the second night. They didn't get through onto the roof until the second night before they got broken through, and it was, it was cold. But they, it was good weather through the day for it, you know, because it was september like. And how did you feel throughout the, the ordeal? Do you remember how you felt? Well, of course, I'd, I'd been stabbed in the arm twice, and once in the side, and they beat it. My whole body was shaking. I had no control. Mm-hmm. I felt I was uh, no throat in the air, and that happened later on again as well. I just no control because uh, one one of our uh, senior officers, when I came back to work, he says, "You they left me on morning in the attic space, but there's no way I could out because it blocked it up with furniture." Mm-hmm. I said, "Well, if I could get out, I think I mentioned it in my book, okay. If I could get out, why didn't you come in?" Yes, I no control of my body. Like I was lying there, and was body, not able to move. No food, no water, no, no refreshment, nothing. Yeah, you didn't eat or drink, did you, the whole time that they, they were with you? You were given food very occasionally, but I remember in the book you said that you just couldn't eat. I think the first food came in about the third, but I didn't eat it anyway. I didn't eat anything anyway. I could do it without food. I could do it without sleep. So it wasn't so bad there. Like, and my wife knew that as well. <laughs> But what you just said a minute ago, I found that quite sad in your book where after you were released, people almost implied what you'd said. Why did you not leave? But as, as you said, well, you couldn't have. They had chairs in the way of the doors and things. Oh, the, front of the, the, the attic and the, the doorway, that was all blocked from London. There's no way I could have got out. And say I was in like, there's no way I could have got out like, I was just mm-hmm. lying there. The three that went onto the roof, you see, and he, as what he mentioned, you could have got out when the three that went up the roof, but no. But then I said, if I could get out, why did you not come in? You could have moved the furniture. And did you ever find out why they didn't come in? No, no. I, I knew I knew they wouldn't come in. And, and, well, they could have come in then, but uh, I, I know when you're in the horses, says, because I've been involved with somebody else, I mean, one. There's, not, there's nothing you can do. Mm-hmm. Not really. Nobody could come back quick enough and tell them as they ask him and like. Yeah. They were worried, weren't they, that they might have had time to kill you had they known that staff were coming in to rescue you. Uh, well, that, that was a threat. Like, it's if any tried it, one watched along the roof, one watched at the Arctic entrance, and one was. Uh, he was beside him. He had a, still had a knife flight. And he, he just, well, when that's the rest, he shouted, if you don't get off the roof, I'll stop him again. Wow. The other time the gas and the stun grenades were in. Mm-hmm. And where where were you? What was happening when the SAS came in and rescued you? Because from your book, I believe it happened in a matter of seconds that they rescued oh, you. Oh, this, but, well, I had a slight scuffle and he shouted, if you don't get off the roof, I guess i one had landed on top of me, oh. uh, but I thought he had landed with the, the gas first because he'd been watching the roof. Mm-hmm. I've since seen the one that came in, actually, that either one that took me out. Oh, wow. 
Nee, ik zeg het. Aan mij was stekt. Met een right hand. Ik heb een of you die left hand. Ik zeg dat je dat net hebt met zo'n heel lange dok in me. Maar dan nu, dat is de gasers gewoon en dat lijkt zo flashen en de noise lijkt het ook. Dan hij just took me up. Hij zegt, over de roof. We are in the Arctic space, you see. Mm-hmm. Run along. I read a line shot like that. In prison, stop. That's dark. Wow. I just, I just did it. It's like being back in the army. I just, you just run along there. As a rope, we are climb up at and down a ladder under the hall. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And it looked like a high roof as well. If you look at photos, it looked like you were far away from the ground. With 80 feet, I think it is. 80 feet. I think it's around about that, I think. Wow. And what time of day did do you remember that the SAS came and got you? Early morning, something there in early morning. Okay. That's when you're at your lowest, you see. Mm-hmm. Well, in army, that's what you do with like, the lowest mm-hmm. time. And how did you feel during the ordeal? If, if you knew that staff weren't going to be able to come in, did you know it was going to end? Did you have fears that you wouldn't have been rescued? Yeah, well, you wondered. But it was one period, I was in a cell with about 10 prisoners. We, we all look after you, Jackie. Then, next minute, they, they were all out. They got okay. to get prisoners out at the end of the hall when the time went. But then they scared of one another as well. There's a lot of fear that goes on between them, you see. Yeah, absolutely. Their prisoners are scared of other prisoners, aren't they? I think that's quite normal in prison. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, you're different guards, like. Just the same that I do sight. All right on that side. Yeah. So it was just you and three prisoners in, in the end during those yeah. five days, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And how did you feel after after the ordeal? Do you remember how you felt when you had been rescued? I just felt good. <laughs> felt good. I felt good. And then I got a bath from three nurses. So I was taken out the hostel and I got a bath from three nurses. <laughs> Well, you can't complain. Silver lining. <laughs> and you, you obviously, your wife, how, how was it seeing her again? That must have been hard for her seeing what was going on. It was a bad day the next day. <laughs> okay. So I said, the only one with the prisoner I forgot to get back to prison. <laughs> yeah, you, you mentioned that in your book about it, it being her birthday. And um, that's a funny story. And then you got six weeks off. Is that right? Afterwards? It was up to myself. No, we said, come back. But I just felt, if I didn't get back, they had won. Like, I don't like to get beat at the No, I can tell that. I can tell that you're very strong-willed. It's very admirable. So were you were you offered any kind of counselling or anything for what you'd been through? Nothing. No, I got more help from a person. Uh, he gave me a psychiatrist that worked with him. And he's done a paper on prison officers being taken hostage and how it affected. And he found it 10 years after. There was some other problems. Mm-hmm. And so I wrote him and he gave me a copy of it. It went private, of course. And he sent me a copy of uh, his findings because the doctors, they didn't know either how to deal with it because I've been one of two hostage situations like mm-hmm. So what what you see that they, they, they were happier as well. He said, my doctor, we don't know what we're dealing with. Yeah, that's it. And um back then post-traumatic stress disorder was probably not hadn't even been thought of. No, 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 no. Well, you didn't know, just things are happening and you don't know why. And well, I thought I was okay, but I, I wasn't mm-hmm. realized later on like but, uh, that could have been like. Really. Mm-hmm. And there's a bit in your book that I found really quite heartbreaking where you go back to work and you're in reception and uh-huh. one of the people involved actually then quite badly assaults you. Uh-huh. What happened? Well, I was in a reception which you're on your own, like there'd been exercises and that person, he, he, he was on punishment. And they took him in through the reception, which they shouldn't have done, but the punishment block that you could cut through. They took him in there and I was waiting for a draft coming up from Berlin. So I was looking out the record cars, no, for the property and everything. 
Mm-hmm. And that's what made his motion off the wall, like, because you have given evidence against them. <laughs> yeah, you had to give evidence against them at court, didn't you? Yeah. And then this was backlash after yeah, that. He got five years, I did, I'd do his life, you are doing a life sentence anyway, like. Mm-hmm. That's something I wanted to talk to you about as well, is when prisoners are serving such a long sentence, do you feel that they sometimes have nothing to lose and so will behave in that kind of way? Yeah, I would think so. Like, as I say, I always make problems. Mm -hmm. How long after this, the riot, but then also getting your head smashed against the wall, which in the book sounds horrific, how long after that did you decide that being a prison officer was not for you anymore? Oh, I had to retire. I was 60, so you had to retire at 60. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So you, you didn't actually leave. You did your entire service regardless. No, I never put two and a half years to go or something. Wow. So do you feel like the prison service protected prison officers back then? No, because when I started, as I said, the staff were getting assaulted every day. Mm-hmm. The governor wasn't punishing. So we got together and said, like, any assault goes to outside courts. That they brought it down. Well, it dropped out after that, like. Mm-hmm. Was there any time that you felt that you didn't want to be a prison officer anymore, given the, the things well, you had to go through each day? No, no I say I don't need to get beat. Fantastic, yeah. So, Jackie, you are back in Peterhead now, aren't you? You're there yeah, um, yeah. In, in the museum. So tell us a little bit about that. I'll go to that. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> no, I, no I, I always hoped that somebody would do it after, like, that somebody would set it up as a museum and all I could know is uh, the riches. Somebody saw something there. And oh God, they did it like he did. So I said, I would tell them all I could like it. Just went, went along and we met along. And in a book, I, I would have never thought that was kind of threatened. Like the, oh, I, I said, but it's not, not, not a story in it. I couldn't see a story in it. At the time, like, but you can hardly be convinced that they can get my book. Well, I'm, I'm glad you wrote the book. Um, it seems very popular. I'd put online that I'd read your book, and I got an awful lot of people responding saying that they've read your book, and it's an absolutely brilliant story. So it's good that you've done it. So what kind of things are you doing in the museum? I'm led to believe that some people will call up and ask if you're working. And if you're not, they'll come another day when you are working. So I think you're very popular. Well, of course, with the pandemic, was, I haven't been here for two years now. Yeah. I, would have, I, I would have come in like but They wouldn't have let me. <laughs> you were banned. I couldn't get out of jail. <laughs> So do, do you do tours of the museum with people or do you just stand and talk to them? What, what's your role? Okay, I like to do tours and then, then they brought them back and then they palmed them on to me. But then some of the things that were said that he used to clear out because you never knew what they were to say next. <laughs> <laughs> and is it the whole prison that's still there, Jackie, or is it just parts of it that are a museum? Well, probably the whole thing. Like, no, it was growing all the time, actually. Well, there's a railway there since I was on a, on a lifeboat. Brilliant. It's, it's still growing, which I'm glad like. Yeah, absolutely. And when did the prison close? Is it 2013? Yeah, 2013, uh-huh. Okay. And did you ever imagine yourself being back in Peterhead after you retired? No, not really. No, I never thought about it. It was, I think, about four years. That's what we had to think. Another officer like us, to, if we play the big band, we all the art of Henry could help out. So we just said, well, come along and see what's going on. There was a few of us to start with, of course, but the yeah. day, uh, because I lost my wife that year as well. So plenty free time, like. Yeah, it sounds like you're you're definitely giving back to society in many ways, not just as a prison officer, but with your book and helping at the museum. So one last thing I just wanted to talk to you about, Jackie, which I found quite interesting in the book. So obviously now people are a lot more rehabilitation pro when it comes to prisons. 
And a lot of people feel that prison should be the punishment and it should stop after that. And I found the end of your book very interesting in that you don't agree with that. And I'd like to know a bit more about that, if that's okay. This is maybe the wrong place. Peter said it was maybe the wrong place to judge that. Yes. Because they were all repeat offenders mm-hmm. and the worst ones. So with them, you're not going to Rehabilitation comes up every now and then, back onto something else again. There's a title, there's a special unit. It doesn't work now here. You get a note one. But the, the living conditions are like when you, you see old films or glass road and everything, must have been horrific. Well, but it's not dense, like. But even Jimmy Boyle said, I could have went either way. Mm-hmm. But he chose that way. And then all the balls are into it as well. They're not working, they're lying about all day, out at night breaking in. They're still going on at it. Still plenty of stoppings in London. And yeah. Never seems to change, and they're getting younger and younger. Stoppings. Mm-hmm. And I would just be interested in your personal opinion. How do you think we can change that? Do you think there's anything we can do as a society to stop that continual reoffending, reoffending? Well, we, time from immemorial, we've been trying to do it. It's never worked, has it? Mm-hmm. It's just bad people, I always think. Mm-hmm. It must have been hard for you to work with them for, for so long, knowing that what you're doing, they might just come back and come back again and again. Yeah, yeah, more, quite, really, they were quite happy there. It's, it's hard to describe it. <laughs> so, most of me could get on with it. Two, two lifers who were troubled with, with the, not only with me, the whole sentence, and the running horse, and they getting moved away to somewhere else. And I got a phone call saying, they went to speak to you, this two guys over in the hospital. Went to speak to me. They went over and said, You were right, we were used. So you get young, I mean, a guy coming and doing a life sentence, 17, eventually comes to Peterhead at 21. And they get used by all the prisoners. Mm-hmm. So, as you could say, it's a breathing ground as well. Yeah, I've heard that prison is sometimes known as a school of crime because they learn worse behavior in prison. I suppose a lot of living conditions, family conditions. Because like, mm-hmm. they were quite far away from their family, a lot of prisoners, yeah. weren't they? Yeah, yeah. But that was another fallacy. She always says, too far for visits. But they could accumulate visits. Okay. And be taken down to their local jail and have their visits there. We the bus went up and down every fortnight, taking prisoners back or bringing back the other way. Mm-hmm. But the only thing we need to go, I think, I've forgotten the time now, maybe about nine visits, and they had them all down the door for maybe a couple of months, and mm-hmm. they had visits then at their home jail. Ah, uh, okay. But nobody ever mentioned that. Yeah. So, Jackie, final thing, would you change the, the career you've had at all, or have you found it quite a worthwhile job that you've done? I, I would have done, well... You talked to them, you spoke, you spoke to them, but it was falling in deaf ears. <laughs> Especially, maybe the wrong place to judge people. Yeah. You put all the bad apples together. You put one bad apple, put the rods, you put all the bad apples together. You said, no, so what did you say? That when they went to the, whatever jail they went to first say Edinburgh, they did it. They could do an induction board to see which prison they went to. If they didn't do it, they got Peter Head. So they didn't do it. Oh, okay. They wanted Peter Head, but the maintained that they didn't want Peter Head. Mm-hmm. Other parts were here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a place for them to socialise yeah. sometimes. This is maybe the worst place to, to judge you people. Mm-hmm. Of course, if they commit any crime at all or to another quarter, they could just get taken back to it. Yeah, it is hard. Some of them, as you say, they just they keep going back in and out and in and out, and you see them your entire career, probably. It's such a waste of life, you know. You think they would go in there. But they, they say it's quite a lot of them stop in their 40s. Okay. But whether that's right or not. I've, I've heard that because that's when they tend to kind of want to settle down 
death yeah. of family and things. You know, we're, we're lost for something as well. So you enjoyed your you enjoyed your career as a prison officer then? I, I enjoyed it overall. <laughs> Good. And yeah. you're enjoying being at the museum now? I, I like working with my hands. Like a, the school was okay as long as I could pick it up as I went along. It's uh-huh. sit and study I read, you know, I'd rather dig a hole. Yeah. So eventually I bought a, a little Victorian house and spent a few years doing it. Hopefully. So, Jackie, if people want to read your book, they can order a copy of it from the, the prison museum, can't they? Yeah, I, I think they will do it. I'll I, I send them out as well. Yeah, I get them coming to my door. I've sold quite a lot for my house shops lately. Oh, fantastic. I said, they send them up and I still sign them and they prefer it signed by me, right? Fantastic. Well, I think it's incredible, Jackie, what you're doing. You are definitely an inspiration for people who think that you can, you know, it doesn't matter what age you are, you can achieve what whatever you want and you're definitely a, a visionary of that. Oh, it's so, of some use. <laughs> Definitely. And it's it's been lovely to speak to you, Jackie. I really appreciate you I, you coming I, in in I, all these weather conditions to speak to me. It's been bad lately. Mm-hmm. But thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome.